magic right now. Oh, on, on this perfect. Magic. Doug and Cassius are going to play under our, our area. Let's see what they got going on here. Do we know what their plays in their modern decks? Or? It doesn't matter. Go Hawks. All right, so it's, it's going to be a, a teammate scrimmage here. As we see Doug Baldwin and Cassius Marsh are going to play against each other. I, I imagine there's probably some trash talk going on at this table. Doug's 89, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's Baldwin on? We don't probably know. Probably blue-white. <laughs> probably, but yeah, according to what we hear, some deck specifically tuned to beat Cassius. So All right, I'm going to go take a look. I think those are the same sleeves, so I, I think Cassius is still on Deploy the Gatewatch here. Um, yeah. But, uh... uh... This is just the best... All right, yeah, okay, so Cassius is still on Deploy the Gatewatch, and let's see if we can see what Doug's on. I, I don't know. I'm, I'll change it once we know. Doug Baldwin, much like me, does not like having his deck upside down. It's blue-white. Blue-white blue control. Blue-white dirtles. He All plays right. Brimaz in his blue-white control deck. That's, okay, so, Brimaz. Blue-white. It's blue-white, but it is... His hand has switched to plowshares and brainstorm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so legacy blue-white dirtles against modern Deploy the Gatewatch. Um... I have a feeling that Doug Baldwin is going to win. I don't know what his win condition is, but I mean, Swords to Plowshares. I guess Swords to Plowshares is not great against Deploy the Gatewatch, though. Yeah. Uh, okay. Doug plays one deck. It's blue white control. So, Doug Baldwin's legacy deck has, I think that's Shadows over Innistrad Basics, which is. It is what it is. And. Uh, well, he needs to talk to Cash to spell it. Okay, so Cash is. Basic lane game. Well, I, Cassius <laughs> has got foil unhinged. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Nope, that's beautiful. John Avon art. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> all right, so Doug Baldwin's just got a bunch of lands trying to dirtle. Cassius has resolved the Sylvan Carriata. That's the perfect start for Marsh, right? It's uh, Oath into Anything, Carrioted. And now play any four mana Planeswalker yeah. from Magic's history. Yeah. Cash has caused <laughs> a, another forest here. Battle of the Seahawks here. Firelit Thicket is the play. Cash just has all of his, uh, access to all of his colors because of Sylvan Is that Carriata. Chandra Torture Defiance? Yeah, I think that's big Chandra. No, that's that's four mana Chandra, yeah. That is. Chandra Torture Defiance. Okay, he goes once again with Nissa Voice of Zendikar, which seems to be the card he plays when he doesn't want to get countered. <laughs> He's baiting. <laughs> So he, I told you he has skills. He's baiting. He, I, he wants Doug to mana leak or you know counterspell this card, but yeah. it's not not going to happen. All right. Well, he's I, I evidently played Magic before. Yep. Um, yeah. Right on. Okay. So this voice of Zendikar is going to. Nah. Okay. <laughs> we got an end of turn Mercadian Mass brainstorm from Doug Baldwin. <laughs> um, with, and I don't think he had any fetch lands. Oh, let's see. First of all. <laughs> okay. What is that card? Is that Urza's Tower? No. 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 Uh, it's a Flooded Strand. I think, an, I I think that's an oh, island. Okay, I see Elspeth Night Errant for sure. That's a Flooded Strand. So the Brainstorm, he's not going to get Brainstorm locked. Uh, right. I see more Landbox Basics. I don't know what that card is. There's, there's a Mystery White card in Doug's hand. Uh, keep in mind that both these guys kind of keep it a little casual. Uh, by, clearly. Yeah. But this is, this is um, I mean, not casual in a bad way, but like, I mean, casual in the sense that they're playing two completely different formats against each other. Okay, Brimaz, like you said. Told you. Time King. to bring the beats. King of the cats. Unlikely to get through the wall of plant tokens that Nissa Voice of Zendikar is going to pump out. Um, Doug's got some help. He's got some swords of plowshares. What a swords of plant token. Um, oh, okay. no. Okay, Chandra Torture Defiance to play for Cassius. So his Planeswalker count is increasing. That's um, going to kill Brimaz. Yes. Uh, the minus ability. Let's see what he does. Okay, so another plant token, uh, the play off of Nissa Voices and a car for Cassius Marsh, and then I suppose he'll minus. Nope, he's going to plus. Yeah, why not? Make it fun. Well, maybe he's going to change his mind. Okay, he pluses. Take two, Doug. Can't play that forest. All right. Two to Doug. Chooses not to kill the mean, To be fair, he probably doesn't have to be afraid of the brim ass because he's got Sylvan Carry added in double plant, right? He could just yeah. chop with plants forever. Yeah, who cares? King of the Cats. And that's that nothing. Ca he a bunch of plants. He could just keep ripping cards off the top of his deck until he pulls the deploy the Gatewatch. So those three uh -oh. lands in this game uh -oh. aren't doing much. What do we got? We got Elspeth. Elspeth Knight Errant. Okay. Guess you should have killed that brim ass. Yeah, now he gets to, now he gets to jump the brim ass and, oh my goodness. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go Hawks. You got it. 
That's okay. right, Matthew. So, Elspeth Knight Errant jumping Brimaz is kind of insane. Hope Doug sees the line. I think he does. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I mean, making a creature is okay, but he's definitely got to jump the Brimaz. Let's see if he does it. Looking for... Looks like he's looking for a... Looking for loyalty dice. Okay. Hopefully he's not looking for a counter to represent a soldier token because... Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think he just jumped the Brimaz to kill Vanessa. Right, and makes a cat. It does make a cat. That's what the... chew up a plant, probably. That's what the die... That's what that little guy is. I don't think they have tokens. So that's fine. Okay. Cash draws a Birds of Paradise, so Cash is really not doing much in his hand, but he's got pseudo-card advantage off the Chandra. That's not going to work. Um, well, that Chandra's not long for this world. He better use it to kill his Grimaz. He turn. already didn't. He just plussed it and revealed that Wooded Foothills. Oh. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, my bad. I looked away for a second to do something else. Yeah. Okay, so Doug Baldwin's got... Okay, I see. He's got one die sitting on the Elspeth Knight Errant to represent one loyalty more than the base four loyalty that it starts with, right? Uh, just so we've had two questions about the chat. The, the chat saying what format is this? This is casual. This is Seattle Seahawks format. Yeah, this is blue and green. Yes, that's really Doug Baldwin. Yes, that's really Cassius Marsh. They're they're playing. Cassius is playing his official modern four color deploy the Gatewatch deck. Doug Baldwin is playing his casual whatever he wants blue white Durrell's right. deck that My according to Cassius is specifically designed to beat him. Oh, can't hit the X proof one. Okay, he swords to plowshares, a plant token, and a birds of paradise. So Cash is going to gain no life, as that's a total of zero power. Uh, he, it looks like, yeah, he's played Authority of the Consuls, uh, and this is all pre-combat. Uh, so I think he's going to plus on Brimaz again and get in on Chandra. That's what I would do, but uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yep, that's what's happening. So, you ever seen, have you ever seen a giant cat leap through the air? No, have you? No. Oh, okay. I don't spend a lot of time in the zoo either. <laughs> But I think that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> okay. Keep in mind, guys, that this is super casual. This is just an exhibition match. Don't worry about any of the rules. Uh, but I assure Perfuffles. you that, that there's a definitely an amount of trash talk going on between the players and a certain amount of ribbing from the winner to the loser after yeah. this game. I know I would. Doug, from what I understand, Doug designs his decks to beat catches. Yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> so, okay. So... That's another whiff on that Chandra. Unfortunately, it looks like Cassius Marsh getting a little unlucky in this game. I'm not sure that Doug's going to accept that excuse later on, though. Absolutely not. Okay, so Nissa. He's got multiple Nissas in his deck. If he makes a plant, it's going to enter play tapped due to that authority of the consoles. Yeah, assuming they remember. It's tapped. Let's see if they remember. Well, it's relevant because of the blockers, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, it looks like they don't remember, but that's okay. Casual. This is exhibition only. We don't care about who wins or loses. <laughs> well, I kind of care. I want Doug to win. You'd like to see what kind of MTG trash talk Michael Bennett would come up with. Well, I expect it would involve some gyrations. <laughs> but only two. Not three, because <laughs> you would get penalized for three. <laughs> okay. Doug's kind of flooding out. Yeah. We're jumping again. Go, Brimaz, go. Yeah, Nissa. No, oh, take out Chandra. We're not sure yet. <laughs> okay. That plant token's tapped. Yeah. All right, let's see. It doesn't matter because the cat's flying. I guess the Brimaz tokens have vigilance. They do. So we don't know if they're attacking or not. Well, they have to. Well, okay. Yeah. But I think we can... Okay. So what happened was Elspeth Knight Errant jumped right. Brimaz. Right. The Vigilant tokens were attacking Nyssa, and right. Cassius has ass assigned a couple of blockers. Right. And uh, it, that, so the token should have been tapped, but we're not going to focus on Okay. And so now it looks like Doug is assembling a, a whole lot of cat tokens, and... It looks like Cash is continuing to just draw garbage off the top of his deck. So I think this game might be just about over. He's scooping him up. He's had enough. <laughs> Doug Baldwin wins with a Brim with Brimaz getting jumped by Elspeth Knight Errant. Pretty insane. Indeed. I love this match so much. I am so grateful for being here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs>
they're making sure that it was lethal on the following turn. I, uh, I don't think it is. Yeah. I'm just going to write something in the chat so hopefully people will see it about this being an exhibition match. All right. Well, that was quite a thing. Too bad we still haven't seen a deploy the Gatewatch resolved, which is a little bit disconcerting, but still, heck of a thing to have happen on our stream. That is authority of the councils. Uh, Doug kind of plays what he likes. <laughs> this is technically like a legacy deck. It might actually be like a vintage deck. I'll bet he's got a soul ring in this deck. Maybe. I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise the, me. The last time I wouldn't get a peek at it if he's going to... I... Okay. I'll let him in. I want to see what... Okay. Uh, I see a negate, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he wants to counter or kill everything Cash just does. It's not very nice. Uh, that's great. That's how casual... That's how casual metagames exist. <laughs> like, you go to your friend's kitchen table, you lose a couple times, then you design the deck to beat him. Well, Doug Baldwin <laughs> is the Seahawks Magic the Gathering champion at this point. Unless they're going to go again. Now, it looks like Doug's putting his deck away, so I think they're done. Unless... They're pulling out a different deck. No, never mind. Doug's got a different deck, so we're going to keep going. Uh, there's, so the, the timer is not ticking down on our uh, stream, but there's nine minutes remaining in round one. These guys oh. are just playing exhibition casual match. Is that a hero of blade hold? Probably. Okay. If, if you saw something great, it's probably in there. <laughs> uh, these guys are just playing exhibition match until we get round two pairings. All right. So it looks like Doug Baldwin up a game at this point. Probably wants to get his honor back and take a game off of Cassius Marsh. Looks like Cassius Marsh is going to run back his uh, silly deploy the gatewatch doubling season shenanigans. Doug Baldwin has put away his legacy deck and has, <laughs> look, I think, has Hero Blade Hold in this one, but we'll see. Yeah. Oh my God, here's the rest of them. <laughs> okay. So. Cassius is still running it back. That on looks like the Planeswalkers. an Ugin Arbor Elf. Xena Ghost. Okay. So some Planeswalkers, not a lot of ramp. This is a mono white deck. Looks like Cassius I think, I think is Doug starting the game deck. before Doug has decided to mulligan or not. He's now on White Weenie. White Weenie. Yeah. Okay. So that probably was a hero of late hold then. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so it looks like Doug's got no lands. Or, okay, just one. Oh, he wouldn't keep a more no than Yeah, but Cash That's started playing before Doug decided if he wanted to mulligan. Well, it's casual. This is Seahawks REL. <laughs> okay, so there's the planes. Seahawks REL. Yeah. So planes go from White Weenie. What? We're changing up. Okay, he's going to start with Westvale Abbey. I fooled you. I don't have colored mana. <laughs> oh, tricks. Yeah, he's running the bluffs. <laughs> so Doesn't uh, does want to give away any info. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he laid it on the table before <laughs> picking it back up again. Okay, so we've got Change Mind Ariel. Um, if Marsh has a Utopia Sprawl, he could play a four mana Planeswalker this turn. Yep. The synergy between Arbor Elf and uh, Utopia Sprawl is absurd. Yeah, it's pretty good. In fact, there's a Green Devotion deck that exists based on that interaction. Yep. Okay, so let's see. Is there a Utopia Sprawl? No, nope, I see another Arbor Elf. <laughs> okay. Arbor Elf, the play. Get in for one. Just kidding. He's not going to do uh, Does 253 <laughs> wants me to turn the spike down? No can do. I'll try to be friendly, though. <laughs> Can't. Go no Hawks. You bet. Go Hawks. Stally is Lieutenant. In his hand, swords to plowshares. I really want Cassius to win this so that it's even done. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's <laughs> oh, that's Lone Rider. Uh, that's is, it? I, is it? I believe that's Lone Rider. It's definitely a transform card. I think that's Lone Rider. Yeah, yeah, that's Lone Rider. So that'll transform into the uh, life-linking Eldrazi thing. But it so looks four-four trampler on the back. Uh, What's life? I, something like that. Okay, Emrakul, the Eons Torn, probably to get off of uh, a, a uh, Nahiri. And yeah. So once again, Cassius Marsh minuses his, his, his Jace here. Um, There's a Nugan in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. He needs more mana, though. He needs to get that Xenagos down and, and plus it to get mana to play the Ugin. Well, he's going to take land plus Chief Planeswalker instead of Emrakul. Okay. He's got to shuffle all of his graveyard in. Uh, no, oh, no with, under with the Jace, okay. yeah, yeah. Under good, good, okay. Yeah. I understand now. Uh, all right, so the Jace minus, so that Lone Rider is good to go on the attack. Uh, another Plains. Let's see what Doug Baldwin goes with this turn. 
you know, it doesn't even matter because this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I, I'm absolutely thrilled to yeah. be watching these two decks duke it out. I'm going to go home and start a diary tonight. <laughs> and this will be my first, my first entry. Dear Diary, I, I hosted a stream with two Seahawks playing Magic. And one of them was playing to play the Gatewatch. My life has led to this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Swords. S words. Okay, so he swords the Arbor Elf, presumably to make it so he can get through, yep, to the Jace. So the Jace will go down to one. Can't mind sitting again next turn. Doug should gain a life here. But uh, if he missed, that's fine too. Blessed Alliance. Okay, so Doug is going to gain four life off Blessed Alliance, but that's going to trigger the Lone Rider ah, and cause it to okay. play. No, that, that makes way that, more sense. That's not a bad play. <laughs> <laughs> he pointed to the Rider. I thought he was untapping it. And I'm like, oh, that's strange. <laughs> I believe the Lone Rider should be tapped still, but that's cool. It's not really going to matter, I don't think. Nah. But still, so that's the play. Yeah. I thought he was going to untap it, and that would have been... Yeah. These guys aren't seasoned magic veterans because they spend most of their time training and for who football. Can play them, but you know what? That play was pretty sweet. In it fact, was. That was a play that I envisioned talking about uh, Standard when I saw a Lone Rider get spoiled. So, let's see. Now, I suppose Cassius Marsh has the option of... With his oath of Nissa. Now, he's got the mana to play his Chandra. He could minus and kill that flip Lone Rider, I believe. Uh, yes, the oath of Nissa permits him to play any Planeswalker in his hand, uh, any up to four mana Planeswalker in his hand. Right. Because of the text on the card. And he's going to. Nope, he's going to plant. All right. It's plant time. Cash Plane's favorite card, Nissa Voice of Zendikar. Conveniently moving the uh, <laughs> pad off the screen. <laughs> Uh, it's 20 to 24. Yeah. I'll we'll actually just change the scores to that. I believe It That Rides is one is the name of the flip. I believe it's a 4-4. Four, four. It That Rides is one. It That Rides as one. If you can pull that up. I just want to make sure. It's a lame name. <laughs> It that rides is one. First strike, trample, lifelink, 4-4. Four, four. Okay, we're ready. You ever watch the Venture Brothers? Yes. It's That's the the guy from Hell. Or, uh, oh, okay. The other one right <laughs> Okay, so Cassius has plussed his Jace Architect, so the It that rides is one is only going to have three power on the attack next turn. Uh, but Doug has a Thalia's attendance in. Or is it, is it Hero Blade all time? Looks that way. The Littlest Titan? Yeah, it makes a lot of creature... Okay, Thalia's Lieutenant. Now, uh, is It That Rises 1 a human or not? <laughs> I think it is. Checking. It's not. No, nope, it is now an Eldrazi Horror. So... Thalia's Lieutenant will, unfortunately, not put a counter on it. Uh, maybe it does at Seahawks REL. It's Seahawks REL, whatever goes. <laughs> is that always watching? Uh... No. No, what is that card? I'm not sure. Is that Gavin? Is that a make two? Human I think that's, that's Gather the Townsfolk. Gather the Townsfolk? Yeah. Let's check the art. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yep, okay. Two white humans. Does not have Fateful Hour active right now, so he's got four creatures now. And Valley's Lieutenant's got two counters on it. Okay, I see what he's doing now. Yeah. Doubling season. Oh, God. Doubling season is down. Everything is insane. Okay, so he pluses Nissa Voice of Zendikar. Now he's going to get two plant tokens because of doubling season. Correct. So he's got plenty of blockers for this white weenie deck. Game on, Nathan Moore. <laughs> okay, so Doug Baldwin attacked last turn with his It That Betrays, and it got minus one, so he should be at 27 life right now. Okay. Where did it go? Oh, it hit the chase. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the players have moved the <laughs> life fed off screen, so if you refer to the score in white on green text on the top, that is their life totals. Uh, Cassius might have just stabilized this game. Uh, producing two chump blockers per turn is going to be big. He has three blockers now, so he can play defense for that Nissa. Yeah, and it looks like Doug is sending his attackers at Nissa Voice of Zendikar, so 
if at any point Cassius rips a planeswalker off the top, this game is probably over. With the doubling season being down, like yes, he's going to be able to do some incredibly. Almost every stuff. planeswalker can ultimate right away with doubling season. I, I I think they all can. I'm not actually sure on that. But, right. Um, there's a new game looming. Okay, so that, <laughs> that's a pretty good ultimate right there. Uh, so. That's Chandra. Now he's going to have an emblem with every time he casts a spell. He lava axes or, or light, light? It's five damage, so lava so axe. Five damage to anything, though, so it's that... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> five damage, uh, which is a lot. I'm sure there's a card that deals five damage to anything. Okay, so we're in turns in round one here, so we may not actually get to see the conclusion of this game, because as much as we'd love to watch these guys duke it out, uh, there is a tournament to do, and there's a lot of people waiting for round two. Right. I think this favors Cassius. I don't think Doug can put enough power I down. Mean, how could it not? He's got a doubling season and a deck full of planeswalkers. Right. As long as he doesn't draw six lands in a row, I think. Well, he's got two, three planeswalkers in his hand now. Okay. So Cassius um, plays a Xenagos. What does Xenagos all do? You know, why don't we show <laughs> the stream coach? Cassius with the spicy deck, confusing us seasoned casters by playing crazy cards. Uh, so I wish. Is it the Reveler? The Reveler, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he comes in with three. Yeah, he can ultimate right away. Exile the top seven. Put any creature or land from among them on the battlefield. So that's not good at all, actually. No, this, this ultimate is bad. I think he's playing it for the mana boost. Or he could he could make two Seder tokens with doubling season by zeroing it. Yes, and then he's producing four blockers per turn right. via the two planes. Right, I think that, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, this is a spiral downward for Doug. <laughs> get it? Yeah, I, do I get, get it. it. Okay. Nicely done. Oh. Well, sure, picking up what I'm putting down. Okay, so two Planeswalkers <laughs> played this turn. It looks like, yeah, he chose to generate mana with the Xenagos to enable him to play the Chandra. So now he's going to... The Chandra's going to enter with how much loyalty? Like a billion? Uh, I don't know. And he, eight. <laughs> so instead of ultimating it, he chooses to minus it onto the Lone Rider, the flipped Lone Rider. Yeah. But I don't think that matters. I think that... I think he can do whatever There's he really wants. no way Cassius can lose the game at this point. He's got everything in the world. Uh, we're... We're in Cassius' world now. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we do. Yeah, I think actually that... Oh, wait, no. With the exception of Swords to Plowshares, which was played in this game. So, I mean, technically Doug's deck right now is Legacy. Because he's got Swords to Plowshares. Sure. Other than that, I think his deck is standard legal. Uh, no, Hero Blade Hold. So, it's... Okay, never mind. It's casual. It's, it's casual. These guys play mostly casual. So it looks like uh, that Chandra only has one loyalty on it right now. Uh, again, hey. probably doesn't matter. Seahawks are real. <laughs> that Ugin is actually kind of... I mean, the, It's actually detrimental. Well, he, he can just ultimate it right away. He can ultimate it right, he away. It right if he, away. Yeah. If he remembers the doubling season, then that Ugin is completely insane. And what does Ugin's ultimate do, Nathan? I believe you draw seven cards and then gain seven life and put seven permanents from your hand into play? Yeah, it's a call to Nicol Bolas. And I feel is. like that's also good with doubling season because many of those permanents are likely to be planeswalkers. Which means that... <laughs> it's, I mean, it's kind of absurd, actually. Yeah. The whole deck is kind of absurd. Yes, this is Absurdity the Magic deck, but it's great at the same time. Right, okay, well, here we go. It's time for Cassius Marsh to drop an atom bomb on Doug Baldwin. <laughs> Toby Sprawl. That's being polite. So there's a shock. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, uh, if he pluses the Xenagos for mana, then he can play his Ugin ultimate it right away. No, he's going to plus the or Chandra plus for Chandra. mana. Sorry. Okay, so there's Ugin. All right, so that foil Ugin is going to cause Doug Baldwin to collapse into a heap of goo. That This is insane what's happening right Yeah, okay. He's ultimating the Ugin. Uh, let's see if he draws anything good. I see a bird and a bunch of lands. That's not good at all. Oh, no. We're going to see Oh, but he's Nahiri, so now he's going to ultimate the Nahiri <laughs> and get an Emrakul. And he could Oath of Nyssa. No reason not to. Plays that one. He could play the Oath of Nyssa. Legend rule. Yep. Cassius Marsh knows the rules of magic, I think. I, yeah, see, so for the most part. Clearly knows He's missing some triggers, but that's okay. No, he's tearing it up. And yeah. this, this is really dirty what he's doing to Doug Baldwin here. Yeah, I haven't seen a tragedy this big since the election. Uh... <laughs> Cardinals game. <laughs> Cardinals game? Yeah, that too. That's for, that one's for you, Zach. <laughs> uh, so, AJ Soccer just hosted us. That's really cool of you. Thank you. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got some lovely people hosting us right now. Uh, the Cart Kingdom other channel is hosting us. Uh, Geek Fortress is hosting us. Uh, AJ Soccer, thank you. Yeah. So this game's pretty much over, but at this point, Cassius Marsh has Doug Baldwin in a headlock and is noogieing him into submission. 
this might be the greatest game of Magic ever played. I think you're right. <laughs> if you have any appreciation whatsoever for casual Johnny stuff, this will appeal to you, and this is this is your and the Nirvana. Ultimate, ultimate on your... the Nahiri. I think I know what he's going to get. Oh, what's that? I'm thinking Emrakul, comma, the Eons Torn. Oh. There that, it is. That's a pretty good card. Yeah, I've heard that it's good. I don't know. <laughs> um. I, he's going for the flawless victory. Okay, so there's your Annihilator trigger. He's <laughs> dumpstering Doug Baldwin so hard that his mama can feel it right oh, now. Man. Um, I can't believe he <laughs> Doug Baldwin... I, I admire Doug Baldwin's tenacity, sacrificing his six permanents, not yet recognizing that he's mega super dead. Doug doesn't scoop. Like it, so I did say I played with him once before, and he doesn't believe in scooping. He waits until he's at zero life or whatever. All right. Well, let's see if... <laughs> if uh, well, look at the, Doug Baldwin, I think, has just reminded Cassius Mars that the Emrakul needs to go back to his hand at end of turn. That's only polite, really. That's, I, I mean... He's Doug's still got a shot at this game. <laughs> okay, so real quick, Cassius Marsh is going to make a... And it looks like Doug Baldwin has just reminded Cassius that he gets two Seder tokens off of that Xenagos. He's He is one of the nicest guys. That's I, I, He is a true sportsman. Yeah, exactly. You already attacked. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The double attack phase. Doubling season doesn't give you two attack phases. <laughs> it should. The card's already like a five mana nonsense this is card. Quite, this is quite a thing. <laughs> all right, finally we're ending the turn. Okay. Emrakul goes are, back to Are you done, Cash? Is, it, is that all you got? <laughs> I, mean, how, I mean, you can give him another attack. Well, I'm gonna, well if I'm done, I'm going to untap, look at my card, play a spell, I, and then pass the turn. Doug Fresh knows some stuff about magic. He had to remind Cash of a couple of things that turn. Yeah. Okay, Knight of the White Orchid. Will it be enough? He's going to get a Plains. Well, I mean, Plains is their good. <laughs> Since he lost all of his lands to an Annihilator. Let's see, let's see, let's see if this... All right, well, it looks like Cassius Mars has just reminded Doug Baldwin to untap his Thalia's Lieutenant. So. Well, yeah, to be fair, you can't, runs both you can't miss your untap, but, he is, but he's That's just a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He's just okay, a nice so. Well, Doug, Doug Baldwin goes on the offensive, not to be denied. No fear. Fierce in the face of, of you know, pressure and... There's a doubling season. There's three planeswalkers, four planeswalkers, a bird of paradise, a bunch of creatures. Cash Marsh got to make sure he maximizes his mana at this point in the game by fetching at end of turn. Yeah. Right. So that that will thin his deck so that he doesn't draw a land mm -hmm. and maybe he can draw another planeswalker, which might just give him what he needs to win this game. <laughs> it's going to be a close one. Uh, uh, Doug's actually at 15 life. I should correct that. I'm sorry. Uh, no, he's not at 15. He's at 11 because Cash has attacked him twice. Oh, that's including with two saves. Yeah. Tokens. Oh, the doubling season granted an extra attack step for some reason. So, I, my, my mistake. <laughs> okay. I think that at this point, Cassius actually has enough mana to hard cast Emrakul the Eon's Torn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus 2 on Chandra, plus 2 on Xenagos. Yeah, so Cassius can actually hard cast the Emrakul, and I sure hope he does. Yeah, I want him to take another turn. That's exactly what this game needs, <laughs> is Cassius to take another turn in Magic. <laughs> I want to see... Him cast every single spell in his hand that he's. So, Big Hoss Lagasse has asked, How is this still going? That's because Doug Baldwin is a tenacious competitor and never surrenders. Never. And I admire that. Yeah. I, I spoke with him before about getting into magic. He's like, I can't because I'll just get too addicted to the competitive play, yeah. play on it. I, so, I, he's keeping it casual. I hear Frank yelling pairing, so we might not see the actual end of this game. Yeah, all right. All right. So the I guess handshake. a hard cast Ember Cool is enough for Doug Baldwin to pack it up. And we really appreciate the two of them being good sports on behalf of Big Brothers and Big Sisters here at Mock Sporting House. That was very cool of them. And what a game.